we've we've seen capture, right? Light field capture. Uh, how about display? Is there anything in the display area that is particularly appropriate for light field files? Uh, might we see? Uh, I mean, 3D is one obvious application. VR with two separate sc screens, or you know, stereoscopic. Uh, anything else that we might imagine coming down the pike? Well, I, I've seen some demos, and I think there's going to be some very interesting multi-perspective panel displays coming out. And there's there's op there's companies out there working on it already, Ostendo, Leia 3D, um, and, and and others that are working on uh, essentially light field displays, right? So as you walk by the panel, uh, whether it's a TV or your phone, you'll actually see different perspectives, different images. Um, oh. It's early days, although we've seen some pretty amazing behind closed doors demos. So I think it's sure. actually, it's just a few years out would be my guess. Um, at which point, uh. traditional photography is not going to really have kept pace. We're going to need light field photography uh, or holographic light field photography to generate these holographic images for these new these new panels. Um, is, this, is this the same or different than... Uh, auto stereoscopic. It's a similar idea, um, but imagine if you had an auto stereo display with lots of zones, very finely divided zones, and uh, nowhere, no matter where you walked around, you got a novel view. And then imagine that the screen itself was able to deliver a different view to each zone. Well, now you're approaching a holographic display, and as the density gets higher at a certain point, it will have it will give you the impression of walking by a window uh, rather than you know standing and staring through uh, uh, just a traditional stereo 3D image. So, mm. you know, some of the techniques are, are absolutely portable. You get those zone size down small enough, it'll work. The problem is you run into that data problem right again, right? If you're going to try to serve a thousand zones at 1080p, I mean, now you're talking, what, two gigapixel again, or sorry, more than that, if you have vertical parallax as well. So the numbers get out of control really quickly. And, uh, really say, quickly. Yeah. <laughs> so I'd say that's, that's sort of an unsolved problem right now, not just because of the data size. Again, it's compressible, but it's not addressable, right? If you actually have to have that many physical pixels, that's outside of today's technology also. But there are some mm. people working on some kind of very clever approaches to it. Um, so again, you know, I have confidence that the companies working on that and the, and the inventors working on it are going to make a lot of progress in the near future. Yeah, it seems like it's coming faster than I, even I would have imagined. Pretty amazing, uh, pretty amazing developments. But if you want a, yeah. a holographic display today, you can go out and get an HTC Vive, right? I mean, VR is functionally holographic in, in my construction of it, right? So mm -hmm. that's, my, that's, my, uh, that's my punting on the question. Well, <laughs> very good. Uh, I have to admit, in the VR uh, demos that I've seen, uh, I've not been that impressed because, for example, I can easily see the screen door effect. I can see the pixels. And the, moving my head around is not like simply looking into a real world situation. And I could easily see getting motion sick after a while if, if certain conditions were met. Uh, will, will advances in light field technology and so on help all of that? They, they absolutely should. Um, keep in mind that one of the limitations we're seeing with uh, current VR displays, particularly of live action footage, is not actually the screen resolution. Uh, you can see the individual pixels uh, in some cases, but most often when you're seeing things look pixelated, it's because uh, you're taking maybe a 4K file, maybe a little smaller uh, if it's downloadable, much smaller if you've, if you've been streaming it, and then you're stretching that rectangular image out over the entire 360 sphere, and then the individual display you're looking on is only showing you a subset of it. So in practice, you're actually addressing many fewer pixels than those screens are capable of, uh, particularly for like the Gear VR. Um, they are using an onboard H.264 decoder chip typically to decode the video so you don't just completely drain the battery. Well, that chip is, is sized for the inherent native screen resolution. So, if, so you're kind of, you're stuck. The pipe is only so big. When you try to push spherical video through that pipe and then window in, you're probably an order of magnitude below what the screen can actually display. If you want to see what the screen can really do, you can load up still images. There's a sort of a still image photo gallery. Unfortunately, they're not stereo. Optically, it's difficult to shoot 360 stereo. Um, there's some companies doing a lot of heavy tech around that. But in mm -hmm. practice, uh, the, the photo gallery that's out there is mono. But it's, it's much higher resolution. It's not, it's not perfect, particularly from a home theater geek's perspective. You can still <laughs> see the individual pixels if you look. But it's a lot, lot, lot higher resolution than the current video uh, uh, experiences that are out there right now. And that's just you know, a fundamental technology limitation. Yeah. I hadn't thought of that before, that you're taking basically a rectangular image and stretching it out. So you're, you're, and so, and you're looking at a window and what you're seeing is many fewer pixels than, than you would otherwise. Uh, so that may very well be, uh, that, that makes a lot of sense to me. And I hadn't thought of it before. 
Yeah, there's also another effect, which uh, I realized since the last time we spoke, I was talking to my co-founder about this, and there's, there's an unfortunate property that if you think about a traditional 2D screen and a 2D video codec, uh, you actually know where every pixel's going, right? So if you've got a 1080 display and you're going to serve 1080 video, it's a one-to-one -one correspondence. If you yep. upscale or downscale, you know, you've got some algorithm to upscale or downscale, and, and it gets a little soft, right, or maybe it's not, not quite as high quality. Well, with VR, you actually never know the exact angle a person's going to be looking at, so every pixel is always interpolated. And that's actually a major problem. And as the resolution mm -hmm. gets closer to the actual screen displays, we're actually going to see a flattening out of apparent sharpness because it's still going to be interpolated and it's going to get sort of anti-aliasing effects. So we have to kind of get to much higher uh, signal resolution relative to the display before we're really going to unlock the power of these screens, which is mm -hmm. uh, bad news. The good news is I think uh, I think there's some techniques in light field that may address that directly. but. Uh, that's 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 trade secret. <laughs> that's not, ah, well, we don't want to we don't want to reveal that's any right. trade secrets. Yeah, that's right.